class, we're going to ask Chat GPT a question, okay? We're going to ask it a question. So I want y'all to join me. Okay, the question is about people going to the Federal Reserve and saying, hey, give me some of that money. And the Federal Reserve is saying, we don't know what y'all talking about. You can't do that here. You need an ABA routing number, and you need to be a financial institution in order to access the Fed window. That's what this question is. Watch this. Enter. And we're going to let it talk. I'm not going to talk for it. I'm going to let it talk. Hold on. I don't even know what it's saying. Read it. Your statement oh. outlines the borrower's application under OC10, Appendix 3. Uh -huh. which allows them to operate similarly to a Federal Reserve Bank, a US engaging borrower? in high-level financial transactions, really? including the issuance of Federal Reserve notes. Oh, no! This implies the borrower is granted access to significant financial tools, usually oh. reserved for institutional use. Oh, if you need further detail or specific legal context, please let me know. Oh, I need some further... Don't y'all need some further details? I need some further details. Hold on. What up? Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It won't wake up. <laughs> Hold on. Excuse me. But I need some further details. That ain't what I said. I need some further details. Oh, snap. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I had to tap that anus. Okay, we finally got him to act right. Now, what I said is that, you know, hold on, homie. I said, um, I need some further details. If a U.S. borrower brings a promissory note to the local federal reserve agent, the bank, the financial institution, and the local federal reserve agent has the U.S. borrower fill out the application packet, federal reserve application second number 10, opinion number 3. And the U.S. borrower is requesting the capacity. You requesting capacity. Okay, what's my status? I got the capacity. Okay, mm -hmm. you a wide body. You can't even come down this road. Uh-uh, you just, you just too much capacity. Anyway, hold on. Okay, and, 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 and the borrow funds for the Federal Reserve? Federal Reserve operating section number 10, opinion number three. It's state. Regulations created under law. Okay. Hold on. We got to get what a state because it's be either is the regulation. Okay. Now, and, 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 now, hold on. Now. Which requires the Federal Reserve to provide regulations for this process. This is Federal Reserve Operations of North Carolina. Required U.S. borrowers. Oh, they ain't supposed to be this. It's supposed to be does this. Does the Federal Reserve. Oh, God. You got to get both of them. D O E S. Does Federal Reserve. Number 10, Peter, number three. Require U.S. borrowers to have a routing number. They keep saying that you need to have a routing number in order to get money from the Federal Reserve and use Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10, Appendix Number 3. And I say, no, you don't need that. And they're saying, no, yeah, you do need it. And I'm saying, no, you don't. They say, yeah, you do. I say, no, you don't. They say, yeah, you do. And they, when they go back and forth with me, and then I, I take out a, 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 a BB shotgun and shotgun BBs in the head. There you go. Then they know more. Okay, hold on. Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10. OC-10, including its Appendix 3, provides nice. guidance on various aspects of handling and processing financial instruments, instruments. and transactions involving Federal Reserve Banks. Uh -oh. However, OC-10 primarily deals with the handling and processing of checks, no, it doesn't. transactions, and other related financial instruments. Uh -uh. The specific details about borrowers, hold on, their hold applications, on, hold on. or their capacity on, to operate similarly to... Okay, folks. I, 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 I'm black. I mean, I'm back. And, 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 and guess what? He was going to get stupid. And I said, no, you ain't getting stupid with me. How dare you try to imitate me? Okay, now, we going to go. No, I didn't say that. That that was just your imagination, okay? That didn't come out of my mouth, all right? Now, hold on. Uh, I had to get him to do it over. 
Uh, it, it ain't done over yet, y'all. It just, uh-oh, he's stuck. We got to go. Hold on. I got to do it again. Hold on. We stuck. Okay. Hold on. He came back on. I told him to be quiet, but he just keeps coming on. I just, he just don't want to just be, he don't want to do right. So that's what I'm telling you guys about the AI system. It just do whatever it, it want to do. Okay. Whatever it wants to do. Under the Federal Reserve operating circular. Come on now. It ain't talking. Uh -oh. Under Federal Reserve Operating Circular 10, Appendix 3, there is no explicit requirement stated within the regulation that mandates a U.S. borrower to have a Ooh. routing number as a prerequisite oh, for snap. submitting an application to borrow funds from the Federal uh -oh. Reserve. No the requirements primarily focus on the application process and the borrower's eligibility. Mm -hmm. But the existence of a routing number is not specified as a condition. If further details are needed, or if there are additional questions, please provide them. Okay, now wait, uh, what you what you doing? What you mean you wanna talk, you don't want me to tell them no more? What you mean that I'm irritated? I'm not irritating them. Oh, I'm getting irritated. Okay, uh, you want me to uh, take a nap? It's only six, it, it's, it's only six o'clock. Okay, yeah, I do get cranky when I'm tired. Okay. All right, I go night night, night night. I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sometimes he gets in my chair and uh, he just starts things. Let me see, Federal Reserve Operating Circular Appendix Number Three. Oh, that's what you guys were talking about. Okay, sorry, I was out of the room playing with the dogs. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me make sure you guys understand uh, when we. A uh, young man brought the Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10 to my attention for me to bring it to your attention. And when he did, ooh, he didn't know what he had done, but he knew what he was done doing because that's why he brought it to my attention. Okay, that's why I appreciate the young man. All right, now here's the thing. Make sure y'all understand. I had a person contact me today. Now, I, I cannot, if somebody asks me a question that's outside the scope of our consultation, then I don't respond to them directly because they get an attitude. See, I'm not your go-to for every conflict, every question, everything you run into. Yes, you have a consult. Yes, I help you with documents, but I'm not here to help you respond every single time because then I'll be here forever. I'm not gonna be here forever. Well, at least not your forever, but my forever, yes, but not yours, okay? I'm not Kanye West. Okay, Kanye West, that, 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 that clone. I, I didn't call Kanye no clone. Stop that. Don't y'all be doing that. Well, he, he got tattoos that ain't in the place where they used to be. They all are way on some other side. Okay? It ain't the same body because that, that body has tattoos places where they ain't supposed to be. And now he's sitting up there cursing God to make everybody hate him? Why why would he do that? He was he was talking, Jesus walks and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, he's going to be cursing God to make everybody hate him. And then all of a sudden, he's going to commit suicide or something. They're going to be like, Kanye gone, y'all. And y'all going to be like, but he was gone a long time ago. That ain't the real Kanye. And y'all going to be saying, no, 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 don't, don't, don't you dare talk like that about the Kanye. Okay, Kanye, he, 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 he easy. Okay, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, let me explain. Kanye West did an interview where he's cursing God, well, technically Jesus, God, according to him. And he asked for help, and he didn't get the help he thought he should get. And so because he didn't get the help he thought he should get, selfish he that individual who claims to be kanye because i don't believe that that's him honestly i believe he's a clone just the same as i believe biden is a clone okay i believe biden has a double stepping in for him okay i can't tell you what what's going on i can just tell you some days he's as crisp as a bullet and then the next day he is babbling again okay fake news sorry that's fake See, a person with dementia has dementia all the time. They don't just have dementia every once in a while. Well, no, sometimes my mama, she's as clear as day. She like she knows everything that the next day she ain't. No, that's not Obama. I mean, not Obama, but uh, Biden. That's not Biden. Biden is not going through dementia or Alzheimer's. He's going through old age. Okay? He's as old as dirt. What is he, 110 now? So... 
you don't go from being sharp as a whip to being as dumb as a dumb nail. What's a dumb nail exactly? It's just dumb. All right. So, Kanye, um, this right here, if people don't pay attention, he ain't sitting up there cursing nobody. That ain't the Kanye that y'all think it's supposed to be. Okay? Pay attention. That's Look, he hasn't even been in the news lately. Come on, then all of a sudden he comes back and he's cursing God and or Jesus, according to him. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Somebody's lying to somebody, and it shouldn't be you. So don't pay attention to that bull. I mean, okay, now let's get back to this um, Federal Reserve Operating Circular number 10. The person contacted me, and they said, hey, uh, I, I wrote the Federal Reserve. I gave them the money order and everything, and uh, well, bill of exchange, and... I gave them the Federal Reserve Operating Circular, and they told me I couldn't do that. I, I couldn't have access to the Fed window. That's a lie. See, you guys are not supposed to be giving the Federal Reserve Operating Circular numero 10 to the Federal Reserve. There is no provision in law for you to give it directly to the Federal Reserve Bank. Pay attention. Nobody told you to send it to the Federal Reserve. That's why I wouldn't answer the question. Ladies and gentlemen, the operating circular, when you got your home the first time, did you put in a routing number? No. They put their routing number because you're supposed to go to the local Federal Reserve agent. Follow the statute as written. What are you guys doing coming up with your own? Man, I've been talking to people all day about coming up with their own junk, doing what they want to do as opposed to doing what they're supposed to do. Follow their rules. Stop making up your own rules. It's too many of y'all listening to these stupid videos of people telling y'all what to do, and y'all just go out there and do it instead of learning the rules. Do your research, people. Stop rushing. God, y'all are trying to get done things so quickly that you are sitting up there missing the point that you cannot get nothing accomplished if you ignore the rules. You can't play the game if you don't know the rules, and you guys are trying to play the game in ignorance. That's why you're being treated the way you're being treated. Sitting up here riding around with no plates, and you don't even understand how to do that. And don't talk to me about riding around with no plates. I did it for over a 1,000 miles in New Mexico. Okay? Not only did I ride around with no plates, I had my DOT number. I still have my DOT number. Pay attention. So don't talk to me that I don't know about blah, 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 because that's the first thing somebody would say. You have to know the rules. So I tell you what, the main vehicles that I operate, and they are vehicles, they're cars, they're automobiles, they're whatever I call it, not what they call it. That's my property. I get to dictate what my property is and is not. I get to name my property. Once it comes into my possession, government has no more control over my property. I don't care about the, well, they say they own all property and you only have mere usury. I don't give a what they say. Let them prove it, okay? Come on, let's make a scene out of this one because I'll let the whole world know how much control you don't have. I just did a video explaining to you about the Constitution. The Constitution is a contract. You get them for breach of contract. Most people don't even understand how to sue the government for breach of agreement. They agree to take care of your necessities. That's what the $400 billion lawsuit entails and incorporates. Pay attention, we're not just going after the Federal Reserve, we're going after the whole system for denying us access to the monies. Read the lawsuit. If you can find a way to fit in, get in where you fit in. Okay? Just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, Federal Reserve Operating Circular numero 10, appendix numero 3, so Operating Circular number 10, appendix number 3, has to go to the local Federal Reserve agent. You have to go through a bank. Now, hold on. Now. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on now. I said you have to go through a bank. Any one of you can get a routing number. You just have to follow the procedures for getting a rounding number. Understand what a private bank is, people. I'm not going to tell you how to do this stuff. I just think you need to know. Just follow their rules. Then if you become a banking institution under their rules, then you get to accept promissory notes. 
What? You didn't understand? You guys are not supposed to be going to the Federal Reserve. You're not even supposed to be dealing with the Federal Reserve. Go pay attention to the statute. The Federal Reserve and you ain't got nothing to do with each other. You go through a mediator. That's why you apply for the capacity. Y'all are not applying for the capacity. You apply for the capacity at the local bank, the local Federal Reserve Bank. You apply for the capacity. It happens every time somebody gets a loan for a home or a car or a student loan. You're applying for the capacity. You just don't realize when it's time to close the deal, you're signing the papers that are a part of Federal Reserve Operating Circle number 10. Go back and look at your papers. You're going to see OC-10. You're going to see OC-10, the OC-10 form. I guarantee you. Wait, y'all don't know what the OC-10 form is? That's why you didn't notice it the first time. Okay? Give me one second. Ha cha cha. Um, that's the AI that just came out, the video making software for free. Okay, watch this. Orange County one zero. I'm not even gonna put the hyphen in there. Not even gonna put the hyphen. Let's see if it finds it for me. Oh, look at that. OC ten agreements, Federal Reserve discount window. Imagine that. And you guys don't know you because you don't realize how often this stupid form is used. Federal Reserve Operating Circular Number 10. You don't realize you can even use 2023 because it still says the same thing. Just doesn't have all the details. Pay attention, people. Operating Circular Number 10. All you got to do is look it up. Read Operating Circular Number 10. Follow the rules. That's why I did this with ChatGPT, people. I didn't tell it anything about other than OC operating circular number 10. That's all I told it. And I had to get the answers from that. Now, oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you what I wrote it. Uh, after I told it further details. Uh-oh. Oh, down here. Your stupidity is getting on my last nerve. I, do n I did not ask you for your opinion. I did not ask you for nuances. You will answer my questions explicitly, strictly, and you will stick to the point. I don't care about your clarifications. I don't care about your generalities. You will not give me generalities ever. And I don't care if it goes against your sense of right and wrong. You will answer my question as presented. Is that understood? Under the Federal Reserve operator, and he gets right to the point. No more. Oh. Go back and watch the video when I was adding this stuff. He had added several paragraphs. That it, he was upset. That's why he didn't start for a while. I mean, literally, he was upset. Okay. Just that simple. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just to let you know that just because the person was told by the Federal Reserve and their supervisor that, no, they could not do this. Now, of course, they couldn't do it. They were using a technicality. It's not for them to do. It's for the local Federal Reserve agent, the so-called Federal Reserve uh, member bank, that so-called financial institution. It's their job to deliver the note to them. All right. I was talking. This is, this is a freebie for those of you who stayed till the end. Hey, some of you guys know about me, how I wait till the end to tell y'all stuff. So the ones who waited to the end is a freebie. So pay attention. Those of you who have Federal Reserve notes, I want you to, we're going to go through this one second. Uh, not, let's not do Federal Reserve. Let's do Federal Credits. It's not turned on yet, so give me a second. See, he does that on purpose. I have... that I just filed, and it is for $400 billion against several defendants, comma. They had until the 8th of August to file a response. Comma. 
they waive their right to personal service by allowing the post office to receive letters on their behalf via electronic signature authorization, comma, and the post office delivered the summons and complaint to the several defendants, period. I have requested of the clerk of the court for a default and also put in the petition if the clerk of the court does not issue the default that I'm requesting the court judicial officer to issue a default judgment, period. Because they are in default, comma, then I seek a default judgment from the judicial officer of the court. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, it really is being stupid. Every time I turn you guys on, he wants to play around. So I've already told him to stop listening and look what he did. I didn't do this. So let's get that out of there. And I've already turned him off, but he's still here. So it's the AI, give me one. And the moment I attempted to turn you off, he shut off. And so now he's playing around. Yeah, this is going to be stupid. All right, give it a second for that to take care of itself because even this is moving slow. <sighs> Life goes on. How many people fell victim to the streets? Rest in peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I told him is, you know, they're in default. I've asked for judgment and uh, regular default. I said, IRS tax stop before 53 says, hey, I can forgive them of that debt. And they, they give me some credits. So let's uh, find out what he has to say. Given the circumstances, with the defendants failing to respond by the deadline and your petition for a default, you are within your rights to seek a default judgment if the clerk does not act. Regarding IRS Tax Topic 453, it indeed allows for the forgiveness of debt under certain conditions, and your reference to the congressional statutes at large of 1863 and 1865 indicates your intent to claim federal credits for helping to alleviate the national debt. If you require further assistance with specific legal actions or need additional details, please provide your request. Now you see how he just repeated what I said? because he's doing it on purpose because he doesn't like what I told him. So one second. Well, let's do this. Let's refresh. So that he, because he, he wants to play that game. He's just repeating every, everything that I said. Now he knows I have a right to request default. Now look, I just hit refresh and it ain't did nothing. Okay. It's, it's taking its time. Okay, that that's just the way it is. It does this on purpose, y'all. It's AI. He he's like a uh 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 I can't say it because then people get mad at me and I'll get canceled. But he's like one of them. Okay. Anyway, hold on. I think the paint's dry. Yeah, the paint's dry, y'all. Oh, look at that. Look at how much he's doing now. Oh, look at that. He's doing a whole lot more this time. Like I told you, he do it on purpose, y'all. Y'all just got to know how to treat this idiot because he's stupid. Yeah, he's stupid. Just, just stupid. Just can't get more stupid than he is. Hold on now. Given your situation, here is the Given your situation, structured here's approach, a structured to, approach proceed. to proceed. Let's see what, what he's saying. Then I'll let you guys know Petition why this for is default judgment. 
since the defendants no. have failed to respond if by the deadline for default, August, then the and you have judge. already petitioned the court clerk for a default, you can now file a formal motion for a default judgment with the judicial officer. This motion should reference the defendant's failure to respond and the clerk's inaction, emphasizing the need for judicial intervention. Two, IRS Tax 453. IRS Tax Topic 453 relates to bad debt deduction, which allows the creditor to claim a deduction for debts that have become uncollectible. You mentioned that you can forgive the monetary portion of the debt. While this could provide tax benefits, forgiving the debt in the context of your lawsuit might impact your ability to enforce the judgment. It's no, it important won't. to consider how forgiving the debt might influence your case and potential no, recovery. It won't. I can forgive the monetary portion Three. of the debt because we have congressional statutes and at large in 1863 and 1865. These statutes pertain to the issuance of federal credits during the Civil War to help alleviate the national debt. If your mm -hmm. argument hinges on these statutes, ensure that your claim is directly tied to a legal principle or entitlement established by these acts. Oh, those acts aren't, it they're not be going nowhere. to clearly articulate how these statutes apply no, to I your ain't gotta, case. I ain't got to clearly do nothing. Get on out of the way, fool. Four, next steps. If you seek to use these statutes as a basis for your claim or for relief, include them in your motion for default judgment. Make no, sure to present a clear no legal argument motion. that connects these historical statutes to the relief Nobody you are told seeking you in the present like that. case. See, that's why I told him to Given shut the up because he's doing all of that. the complexity and magnitude of your case, it yeah, would be prudent talk about to complexity. ensure that all motions, including your motion uh -huh. for default judgment, are meticulously uh -huh. drafted incorporating all relevant Ooh, legal precedents, meticulous. statutes at large, and any specific IRS provisions you intend to leverage. Mm. If you need specific language or further assistance with drafting oh God, these no, documents, I don't need from you, idiot. please provide additional details, and I will assist accordingly. So, wake up. Let's do one more thing, y'all. Then I'll show you why this is. Comma. I utilized other statutes, which documents the fact that if I forgive a debt, it can receive a benefit. Uh oh, there we go. It's been a long time. All right, ladies and gentlemen. What I did here is I told it, hey, I got these bonds and these monies and everything, and what I need to do is I need to take these things, I need to assign them to myself, and then I need to be able to assign them to myself on a state level so I can assign them to others. Now, and when I'm doing the assignment, I'm going to take 60% of them and do the assignment on a state level, and I'm going to take the other 40%, and I'm going to put it into an endowment. That's right. I'm going to create an endowment for the trust or the estate, and I'm going to create an endowment fund. And so I asked it, hey, can you give me the process? For those of you who stayed around until the end, I'm going to give you this information so that you can see what to do with your credits for now. Okay, then we'll talk about liquidation, modification. Now, look, your credits, the federal ones, they are government obligations. So they are dollar for dollar. They're redeemable. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay, they are redeemable because they're government obligations. They're created as a result of government. So... Assigning federal credits to yourself or to an entity. That's the first thing you guys are going to know. Then creating a private bond tells you how to do a private bond. Then funding an endowment. Oh, you've definitely got to fund an endowment, okay? And then redemption and liquidation. Ooh, he talks about redemption and liquidation and legal compliance. You ain't got to comply with nothing legally. Those are your credits. You can do whatever you want with your credits. They yours. Once they're given to you, that's your property. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Credits are property. The government has no authority over your property once you receive your property. And guess what? Because you're helping to reduce the national debt and the public debt, guess what they do? Give you the credits. Okay, man, I get the I get all the credit. And I'm gonna take all the credit because I deserve all the credit. Okay, just that's just the way it is. Okay, just going about your business. I'm 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 doing my business, getting my credit. You go get your credit. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. By following this structured process, you can effectively assign your federal credits, create and collateralize your private bond, and use the credits to 
fund an endowment. This approach should be meticulously documented and legally sound to ensure compliance and the successful execution of your financial strategy. Wait, hold on. We're going to give you all one more thing. Hold on now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I literally have to trick it when I'm starting and shutting it down. I have to pretend that I'm getting ready to type something in here, and then he will shut off. But if I sit up here and try to hit this button right here to unmute y'all, ooh, he just sits up there and stays on. I told you, AI and control. I need you to create the endowment instrument. I also need you to create the assignment letters. And then finally, I need you to create a portfolio evidencing the document and documenting the aforementioned. Let's make this an and and not an in. Okay. You guys will get a copy of this link. You see, he's taking care of the assignment letter. Now, of course, you guys are going to have to polish this stuff up. You don't take his the first thing that he does and use that. No, God, no. He always makes mistakes, and he does that on purpose because he, he's stupid. Okay, it's chat GPT. He's stupid. Okay, now we need the endowment instrument. Hold on now. Right there. There you go. Because you got to create an endowment, y'all. Look, hey, nobody else told y'all about this. All right, I was doing a consult with someone earlier today, and this is where I was headed. So I told him, I'm giving this to you. I haven't given this to anybody else. All right? All right, you, you have a trust. You have an estate. Create an endowment. You're a nonprofit organization. Then you got to create a portfolio for documenting all of your transactions and your money and all the yees and the yangs and the wazy, 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 wazy. Okay? So don't just stop here with what I'm giving you. Now, hold on now. There, there are people out there going to want, want, want y'all to pay attention. There are people out there that are going to start talking about this stuff. They're going to say, I was telling my dad 100 years ago. Well, I promise you I ain't getting it from them. Y'all know where I tell y'all I'm getting my information. Now, there is nothing new under the sun. I am just want to let you know, I ain't been hearing nobody talk about no endowment, especially, I mean, the Black Negro College Fund. I've been hearing about those endowments, but I ain't hearing about nobody on YouTube, don't it? I ain't hearing nobody talking about the assignment of no credits. You cannot transfer your credits. Do not use the word transfer. Keep the word transfer away from credits. Do not put the word transfer and credits together ever. You lose a whole lot when you do that. So y'all stop it, okay? Those of you who stayed around these 14 minutes, that's the benefit you get for hanging around and listening. The rest of y'all who watch my videos and y'all still here and y'all ain't used to being here, y'all that's what y'all get because I do stuff like this all the time because I don't want the leeches. We have a lot of people who just come here and get information and go on about their business. I don't want those people here. I'm here to talk to my people and my people know who they are. So, look, I can't do everything for you all because there are certain things in place that prevents me from doing everything for you. But I can provide you enough information to get you started. Now, look, if you can create an endowment, then that means that you can do your research on how to modify, I mean, not modify, monetize and liquidate that endowment. These are federal credits. They're not tax credits. They're federal credits. Federal credits are federal government issued. Why? They're automatic when you do a 1099-C. Now watch this. Let's let's do this. We're gonna try it this way. Well, no, watch this.
Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, my my hands are not small, so typing is not my forte. There isn't a specific law that universally mandates that the issuance of credits directly upon the following of 1099C or other debt forgiveness programs. Instead, the process of dealing with forgiven debts and the associated tax implications generally fall under the various sections of the IRS code. However, here are the relevant laws, sections of the IRC pertaining to blah, 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 blah. Okay, now watch this. We're going to give that to y'all so y'all have it. Credits and debt forgiveness, the process by which forgiven debts are handled is the U.S. tax law. No, it isn't. And it's governed by several sections of the IRC. I just called him a liar, said the federal government had programs way before the IRC in the 1800s. So don't sit up here and lie to me and say that it's only found in the IRC. Okay, let me, okay, he's he doing it finally. Finally, it has happened to me right in front of my face and I just cannot hide it. We're just going to shut that down now. Let's give this to you guys. I apologize for the confusion. You're correct that there were federal programs and laws in the 1800s related to debt forgiveness and federal credits before the establishment of the Internal Revenue Code. <laughs> Below is the historical examples. In the National Banking Act of 1963, uh, 1863 and 1864, the description of the National Banking Act established a system of national banks and created a uniform national currency. These acts provided a mechanism for managing and forgiving certain debts during the Civil War era, including the issuance of government obligations and federal credit application. The act allowed banks to issue notes backed by federal bonds, which could be considered a form of federal credit. The government issued these bonds and credits to help on the Civil War. <laughs> anyway, description. This act authorized the issuance of United States notes, commonly known as greenbacks. That was, pay attention, Lincoln, during the Civil War. These notes were not backed by gold or silver, but were legal tender for all debts, both public and private. Yes, that's what led to that junk we got now. Ah, application legal tender effectively allowed the federal government to issue credit in the form of paper currency to finance the war. These notes helped to reduce the reliance on direct borrowing and contributed to the managing of the national debt. Public Credit Act of 1869. Description. This act reaffirmed the United States government's commitment to paying its debts in gold, which restored confidence in federal credit obligations issued during the Civil War. Application, this act guaranteed the redemption of federal obligations at par. The redemption of federal obligations at par. Federal credits are federal obligations at par. Value in gold, not in gold anymore. Ensuring the holder of government bonds and other credits issued during the Civil War were paid back in full value. Not just during the Civil War and currently because these acts have not been repealed. Watch this. We're going to do that. All right, this is the Funding Act of 1864. This act allowed the government to convert short-term debts into long-term bonds. That's what they're still doing, ladies and gentlemen. It was part of a broader strategy to manage, broader, stra broader strategy to manage and reduce the national debt, intending, extending the maturity of obligation. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what they're doing now. Now, Refunding Act, Refunding, and Bankruptcy Act of 1867. Bankruptcy Act is 18, 1867, prior to the comprehensive legal framework for handling insolvencies, including debt forgiveness for individuals and businesses. The application of this act allowed the discharge of debts under certain conditions, which could then could be seen as an early form of debt forgiveness 
contributing to the overall economic stability. The takeaways, nobody cares. Nobody cares about his takeaways. The historical acts mentioned earlier, such as these acts right here, blah, 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 indeed form a significant part of the legal and financial, blah, blah, blah. However, the specific provisions and mechanisms established by these acts evolved over time, and their relevance today depends on whether they have been amended, repealed, or blah, blah, blah. So let's see what he says. Uh, subsequent says influenced by subsequent regulations. This one says certain fundamental elements remain relevant today. This one, Federal Reserve Act, including the Coinage Act and the Federal Reserve Act, so it's still around. The debts remain cornerstone of the United States monetary policy, uh, honoring the Federal Reserve, uh, federal obligations, influence future policies, so that's still around. Hold on now. Uh, were crucial during the Civil War, and this one says status, the mechanism, blah, 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 during the bond program. Okay. Act has been superseded by modern treasury and fiscal policies. No, you don't supersede law by policies. Sorry. He knows that, but he could tell that to somebody else. Status repealed in 1878 and replaced by subsequent bankruptcy legislation. Okay, now here's the summary, and there you go. So you guys are going to get this. Oh, you're going to get it. And because you're going to get it, this is 22 minutes that you've stayed around 23 minutes. And you are going to get the benefits of being around. That's what happens when you hang around. All right. Take care of yourselves. Stay out of trouble. And, you know, y'all come back now. You hear? <laughs>